this is Kim Murphy here from Weber State University and I'm going to take you through a little bit of computer architecture. We're going to start off with talking about the parts of the computer. This is stuff hopefully you learned in high school, computer technology, it's just a review for you. So we're going to start off with the insides of the computer though. So the very first main part of your computer is called the main board. This is what houses pretty much all of your your computer. Other, everything else is just a box and other things that plug into the main board. It, um, so it's a printed circuit board. It's not always blue like in this picture. Usually it's green. I don't know why I happened to find a blue one. But but it's kind of your processing device. It put your processors on there, stuff like that. Uh, your processor is kind of your brain of your CPU. It manages any kind of input, output, storage devices, and all the mathematical operations. That's all done by the computer processor. Now, some computers have video cards and some do not. Some have integrated video cards um, and some have separate cards. If you have a huge gaming machine, you know, you're going to want to have your own video card. And all that is is a dedicated card to video. Um, uh, the video card also connects your computer monitor to the computer so you can actually see what's going on inside the computer. Uh, hard disk, that's for storage. You store your, your, all of your information on the hard drive. Your RAM is temporary memory. So when you uh, boot up, my, well, not when you boot up, when you open up your word processing software, you open up Microsoft Word, that's stored in RAM. So anytime you type, it's in RAM. That's why if your computer shuts down and you're not able to save, it's gone uh, because it's only stored in RAM. It's not until you do a save as, and then it's stored on the hard drive. So RAM is temporary memory. Uh, it stands for random access memory, and it only stores data while it has power. Uh, next, another device that you might have hooked into your computer is your network card. Um, the network card just allows you to put a cable into your computer so you can have the internet or connect to a network of some sort. Okay, the next thing we get into is how transistors work. Now, all you really need to know for this particular entry level class is a transistor works by having a power supply connected to uh, an input and based upon that input it's going to give you some sort of output and it works by sending power through there and the power is always trying to get to the ground. Okay, so this is just entry level. Uh, you have a base idea how it works. Uh, this input is done with gates and we're going to talk about a little bit about the transistor gates. If you want to know a little bit more about how transistors work in a, in a better explanation, I've posted a, another video for you to watch that's a lot more detailed than I could ever do in a PowerPoint. So please watch that video instead of looking at this slide. Okay, so now that you're back from watching that video, I assume you just pause this, you know, watch that video, come back to this one. Um, we're going to talk about some of the gates that transistors can make. And this is your basic building blocks for to, to make a, your, your actual computer. So we're going to talk about what AND, OR, NOT, NAND, NOR, and XOR are. The AND gate logic is very similar to the English word AND. For example, if your boss at work says to you, if you're on time to work and you get the reports done, then I'll give you a raise. Well, he used the word AND, so you have to be on time and you have to get the reports done if you want that raise. So let's look at this logic table. Here we have an A and an B input, and then you have an output. Well, let's pretend that A is you're on time to work, and B is you got the reports done. On the first line, we have A is a zero and B is a zero, so the output is zero, you are not getting the raise. Well, if you do the reports but you're not on time to work, then you're still not getting the raise. Same thing if you're on time but you don't do the reports, that's their output is still a zero. It's not unless you have, you're on time to work and you have the reports done then you have a one on the last row that says, yes, you did get the raise in that one situation. So that is the truth table for an AND gate. It has this weird looking symbol over here that has the three, two circles for the input on the left side. 
and those are going inside of the ant circuit and then it has a, a circle coming out for the output. Now the OR gate truth table looks very similar. Um, it has your input in your A and your out input B and then it has an output. So let's give the same scenario that we had on the on the AND gate. Your boss says to you, if you're on time to work or you get the reports done, then I will give you a raise. Well, this time it's a little different. This time we have a zero for the, if you're on time to work, a zero for you got the reports done. So obviously you're still not getting the raise because you didn't do either of those things. But on the second row, you are not on time, but you did the reports. So at least you're going to get a raise that time because you did one of those things. Um, the next, the third line down or fourth, fourth column row is you were on time, uh, but you didn't do the reports done. Well, since he said or, that's still true as well. And if you do both, that's still true as well. You will get the raise. The symbol looks very similar to the end, only it's got a little pointy tail and it's got a curved, curved kind of concave line, I guess. And uh, you can see the symbol, you can see what it looks like, I guess. How do you describe that shape? I have no idea. Anyway, the not gate only has one input and one output. So Anything that's not true is false, and anything that's not false is true. And that's how this truth table works. A zero, the output is a one, and a one, the output is a zero. The symbol for a not is a little triangle, and it has one input and one output. So a NAND gate is really a combination of two gates. It stands for not and. Uh, so we're going to see if we can do our example again, only this time, our same example of, of you, you being on time to work and doing the reports. But this time, instead of getting a raise, if you are on time to work and you do the reports, you will not get fired. See, we have a not in there because it's not and. All right, so on the first line, zero, zero, that means we did not come to work on time and we did not do the reports. Then we have a one, we just got fired. Well, that's what happens, that's what he said. Okay, so on the next line down, we have a zero and a one. Well, we were on time, or we were not on time, but we did the reports. Well, we still got fired, because he said we have to do the reports and be on time. Same thing on the next row down, we were on time, but we didn't do the reports. We still got fired. The last row, it's not unless we are on time to work and we did the reports. Then we have a zero, meaning we did not get fired. So NAND gate, really similar to AND. It's actually the opposite of AND. On, on the AND gate, the output is zero, 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 0001. And on the NAND gate, it's 1110. And the symbol for it looks exactly the same as an AND gate, only it has a little bubble at the very bottom of that big shape in the middle that says, oh, this is not an and. So it's the opposite of an and. Of an and. So the, now that you understand a NAND gate, a NOR gate is very similar. It's not or. So we can still use our same example. Your boss says, come on time to work or do the reports and you will not get fired. Well, if you don't do either of them, you have a one, so a zero, zero is true that you will get fired. Uh, the next row down, you were not on time because that's a zero. And then in B, you did do the reports though, so you're not gonna get fired in this situation because he said or. Uh, third line down, you have a one and a zero is a zero because you were on time to work. Even though you didn't do those reports, you're still on time to work, so you don't get fired. And obviously, if you do both of the good things, you're on time and you do your reports, then you will not get fired. So it's the exact opposite of, of an or. Uh, the symbol for it looks exactly the same, once again, except for the little bubble at the very end that means not. Now the XOR gate stands for exclusive or. 
The symbol for it looks like the OR statement, only it has an extra little line there that means exclusive. So the easiest way to remember the XOR gate is to think of a staircase. There's a light switch at the bottom of the stairs, and there's a light switch at the top of the stairs. When you first get to the stairway, the light is off, and both switches are off. So I'm going to go, he's going to turn the light on. There we go. He turned the light switch on. This is a one, it's on, and it turned the light on. Then he's going to go up to the top of the stairs. The light switch was off even though the light is on. Now when he clicks the light switch, the light turns off. So then he's going to go back down the stairs and turn the light on, but on the way he trips because the light's off, you know, of course. And then he turns the light off, and that turns the light on. So this is kind of like the XOR gate, and I'll show you the truth table on the next slide. Okay, so back to this truth table that we had on the previous slide. For the XOR gate, your inputs are A and B, and you still have your output. Um, it's like you're at the bottom of the stairs and both light switches are off. A zero and a zero turns the light off. When you go up the stairs and turn the light switch at the top of the stairs for B to on, then your output is the light is on. That is, becomes a one. Uh, if the light switch at the bottom of the stairs is on, but the one at the top of the stairs is off, the light is still on. And then when you turn both light switches on, then the light turns off. So it's exactly like the light at the stairs. Now there are other gates listed in the book, such as adders, shifters, and flip-flop gates. These gates are used on the main board and the processor to make up what's called von Neumann architecture, named after John von Neumann, or named after that post office guy in Seinfeld, Neumann. Von Neumann architecture is an abstract model at the core of every computer today. It describes the CPU as having an arithmetic logic unit and registers or high-speed memory. The CPU pulls instructions from the main memory and executes the instructions depending on the input. Those instructions are then stored in main, me main memory or stored or sent to storage or output. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of how computers work.